honored uh, panelists and participants uh, to the uh, Global Leadership in 21st Century webinar. Uh, first, we'd like to thank uh, the World Academy of Arts and Sciences and the UN um, for this initiative. Uh, as uh, we discussed a little bit earlier, uh, the Interparliamentary Coalition for Global Ethics uh, is a partner uh, to this uh, very, very important initiative. Um, a little, a few words about the Interparliamentary Coalition for Global Ethics for those who do not uh, know us. Um, the IPCGE, uh, Interparliamentary Coalition for Global Ethics, has been established with the goal of inviting parliamentarians, civic leaders, religious leaders um, from all UN member states to commit to work to implement the universal values of global ethics for the culture of peace, environmental protection, uh, social justice, uh, and to turn this into national uh, legislation. These global ethics, which have been inscribed in UN General Assembly resolutions are values which we share and require national legislation in order to be implemented. The goal is to act together for prevention of conflicts which pose a threat to freedom, human rights, and environmental protection across the globe as a basis for democratic governance. This will be uh, the first, um, hi Lily, <laughs> this will be our first uh, se session. The session, second session will um, center on the um, initiative of the Esther Jai Foundation to institute a global day of giving uh, through um, a vote in the General Assembly um, in the upcoming year. And uh, we will go into that in further detail in the second session. Um, to start off, um, uh, just as a, a, another brief in, introduction into the um, issue of uh, ed legislation for um, mandatory education for the culture of peace and the need uh, for all UN members to um, create a ministry of peace uh, to, uh, as part of this uh, implementation. Uh, we'd like to point out um, that um, we've had very, uh, various uh, conferences and high-level panels, uh, some in coordination with UNESCO, which is the uh, lead um, uh, agency in the UN for the Mandate for the Culture of Peace. Our patron is Federico Mayor, who was Director General of UNESCO for two terms in the 1980s and 90s, and who introduced the Culture of Peace uh, to the United Nations. Um, just as a, a, a note, um, the Isaiah Declaration um, uh, was uh, issued in May 7th at the United Nations headquarters, um, and we issued the Paris Declaration in the Senate in Paris in May 21st, 2019. The United Nations headquarters faces the Isaiah wall inscribed across from the main building. The quote from the prophet Isaiah was chosen as the founding motto for the world's foremost organization for international peace. In his eternal thought, um, the day is mentioned when no nation will wage war against another nation and when um, the, the swords, the instruments of war will be transferred into plowshares, uh, which are the instruments for providing man's sustenance. Goal 16 of the SDGs to promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development is the precondition for the establishment of uh, or the accomplishment of all the other goals set forth in the SDGs. Education for the culture of peace based on the UN resolutions on the culture of peace, uh, Council of Europe document 13407, a written declaration number 562, which was initiated by Senator Gutierrez, was among our um, high level speakers and in accordance with the Council of Europe white paper and intercultural dialogue and the European Cultural Convention of 1954 um, are the basis for promoting peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, which we feel need to be an essential and crucial foundation for global leadership in the 21st century. Um, one of our uh, introductory speakers, John Max um, Rakatamomji, uh, just informed us that he was hospitalized this morning. And he um, cordially sent uh, uh, his uh, intended um, presentation. So um, as a, an introduction to our um, speaker, uh, to our speaker, which will be, the first speaker will be Senator Gutierrez. Uh, um, I will just introduce, uh, since Ms., uh, the former speaker of um, the Parliament of Madagascar, John Max uh, Rakatamomji, 
um, had first introduced the concept of um, uh, secretary or minister of peace in a conference which uh, he participated in with us at the UN headquarters about two years ago. At the time, we did not know that a secretary of peace uh, exists. Um, and uh, one of the major, um, let's say, um, factors uh, that um, combine uh, the issue of uh, Secretary of Peace with our initiative is that, uh, as you will hear from the Secretary, uh, former Secretary of Peace of Guatemala, um, she included uh, a high level curriculum on the culture of peace on the web uh, for all the indigenous people um, in um, Guatemala. So um, first of all, just uh, a few short um, uh, sections of uh, speaker, His Excellency uh, Raka Tamamji's uh, presentation. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to contribute to this webinar along with the high level panelists. We're actually facing one of the biggest world crises with the COVID-19 pandemic. It is time to show support for each other and bring down all barriers. Today, good health system and infrastructures are key conditions in order to better fight the pandemic. However, in all countries affected by war, conflicts and internal ten tensions, there is a lack of capacity to detect and slow the spread of the virus. This explains why the UN first called on global ceasefire in March 23rd. This could seem like a quest that would fall on the deaf ears of the guerrillas, terrorists and belligerent governments across the globe. But over the past month, fighters from Yemen, Yemen Saudi Arabia, Colombia or Ukraine have signaled a will willingness to put down their weapons as the world confronts a deadly pandemic that could devastate civilian populations and enemies alike. Um, indeed, and armies alike, excuse me. Indeed, it is difficult um, and could not face, uh, the world could not face two fronts at the same time, a war and a pandemic. In addition, the COVID-19 has also provoked a series of discriminatory, discriminatory acts across the continents with different groups being targeted. If the profile of the victims varies from one country to another, there seems to be a common pattern in the discriminatory acts that occurred during the pandemic. Most often the, t the target is generally the other, the foreigner, a person belonging to, to an ethnic or cultural minority. The COVID-19 pandemic tends to reinforce inequalities and exacerbate the problems faced by disadvantaged groups, including access to healthcare, social assistance, education, and employment. The main challenge is to take this as an opportunity for peace, for dialogue, and negotiations. In order to do so, we need to invest in peace in a sustainable, sustainable way. Peace is not only a political problem defined by the absence of violence in war, but is also characterized by the liberation of fear and includes political, cultural, economic, social, and educational issues. It involves living together with our differences, whether uh, in language, religion, culture, sex, by promoting universal respect for justice and human rights that such coexistence depends on. Since we believe the environment is important, so we have a Ministry of Environment. Since we believe that education is important, we have the Ministry of Education. Same for health and justice that have their own ministries. What about peace? Why does it sound so unfamiliar to have a Ministry of Peace? Because we do not have examples of success. This is not true, as we can see from uh, the example of Guatemala, uh, also which we will hear about in detail shortly. Uh, Ethiopia just created one last year. The reality is that we don't want to learn from each other. Um, and it's because we do not know what kind of mandate this ministry would have. Once again, it is not, uh, it is not uh, for this reason. This is not only a concept since we know our needs and many tasks could be attributed to this kind of ministry. Um, we may already have peace institutes, national platforms working on culture of peace or the national peace strategy. However, we can have more impacts, better coordination and resources mobilized within a public administration fully dedicated to these mission missions. It would help direct government policy towards nonviolent resolution of conflicts prior to escalation of violence and seeking peace by peaceful means above all. In Madagascar, like many countries, we do not yet have a ministry dedicated to the culture of peace. However, thanks to our previous exchanges led by IPCGE, I'm personally mobilizing, mobilizing resources and key actors in order to um, advocate and sensitize about it. Uh, even in my country that never experienced war in recent 
in his history, it became necessary to institutionalize um, the culture of peace for better social cohesion, better inclusion for justice and sustainable development. And um, with this uh, introduction, um, may we call on Senator uh, Gutierrez, um, to, uh, who is the uh, chairman of the Senate uh, Foreign Relations Committee in um, Spain and also the um, uh, chairman of the Spanish uh, delegation to the Council of Europe. Uh, he's a man, a man with many uh, hats. Um, just, uh, I will read one paragraph of the um, a written declaration initiated by Senator Gutierrez at the Council of uh, Europe. Uh, we consider that efforts to achieve peace in areas of conflict and to prevent extremist radicalism in all nations require commitment by national parliaments to mandate core education for the culture of peace and the SDGs in all levels of societies and effective legislative measures and monitoring to prohibit incitement to all terrorism in all sectors of society and media by constructing the defenses of peace in the minds of men, as uh, we know from the UNESCO preamble. Um, we call on the Assembly to support the initiative of the Interparliamentary Coalition for Global Ethics as a strategic partner to promote implementation of the United Nations resolutions on the culture of peace and the SDGs through national legislation in the Council of Europe and United Nations member states for mandatory education on the culture of peace and SDGs in all levels of education and strict legislative measures to prevent incitement to extremism, violism, and, uh, violence and terrorism. So with that, uh, we'll uh, ask Senator Gutierrez to take the floor, please. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon from the sunny uh, Spain. Uh, thank you to Work Academy of Sarah and Science for this initiative. And of course to Ms. Beckerman for the invitation to participate in this round table with my friends. Luis Lourdes, Alberto, uh, uh, Dele y Esther. And of course, I, I, I thank uh, Mrs. Gray, you know, to be here with us with, with the moderation of this uh, panel. Uh, yes, a few words because I think, yes, uh, already Ms. Beckerman said uh, some of the, of the, of the solution we are, we are dealing with, you know, in the Council of Europe about uh, the culture of peace. I think in recent years, a deterioration in international, in international relations has been appreciated due to the growing strategic competition between United States and China. And the difficulties of international and multilater multilateral organizations to respond to the challenges of globalization. After COVID-19, we have to decide what geopolitical context of what international relations we want, a new multilateralism or the return to the competition between the great powers. Because we have to recognize that the international order based on law, stability, and security is seriously threatened. And under these circumstances, we live in an uncertain and insecure climate that increase tension and conflict. We need to develop and implement a new conceptual framework of international relation base in, I think, three pillars. Multilateral diplomacy and free trade, security and common defense and cooperation, and conflict prevention and management. I will refer to the last one as president of the Spanish delegation in the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. The Council of Europe, as you know, work overall in human rights, uh, uh, law, and, the law, and democracy, you know, that's uh, the, the rule of law and democracy. This is the, the three pillar where that stand the, what is the, the work we do there in the Council of Europe. And the, and the Council of Europe has been working on the uh, intergovernmental role of government and parliament for the establishment of a culture of peace, preventing violence and terrorism. That's why, as uh, Ms. Berkman said before, in this sense, I present an initiative on this subject, culture of peace, preventing violence and terrorism 
in the Parliamentary Assembly as a council fuel. And it was approved uh, last June, of the last year. Probably we will have to be working on this uh, you know, matter more if we don't have the pandemic you know, uh, time that we have right now. But I would like to, 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 you know, to, to, to underline some sort of, way of this declaration because I think it's very important. You know? It's like uh, overall, because we consider that we the whole, uh, uh, that effort to achieve peace in areas of conflict and prevent extremity radicalism in all nations require commitment by national parliament. And that's why we are working on this. We are working on this because it is essential to regenerate a culture of peace and international coexistence based on the values of defense of freedoms and the rule and the rule of law. And uh, uh, because I would think educating for peace means uh, teaching and learning to resolve conflict, but it means to a way to, of educating in values and attitudes as such. Justice, uh, freedom, cooperation, respect, solidarity, dialogue, participation. And now that's why, you know, the Interparliamentary Coalition for Global Ethics is promoting the establishment of parliamentary partnerships, alliance, and for cultural speed and for the sustainable developed goals in Parliament worldwide. Last March 2030, we were going to have a meeting in the Spanish Parliament in the Senate, you know, but we couldn't have it, you know, because we have, you know, the, the COVID-19. But we are working, as uh, Ms. Beckerman know, we are working for it. So next autumn, we have the opportunity to have this meeting. But this, you know, is only one, also all the one we have to, to have in different parliament. Because we, we need, you know, after the pandemic, you know, to think about what is happening here. So how is for, how we build a better world? And we need for that, you know, uh, the education and the culture of peace, you know, to, 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 to avoid, you know, conflict and, you know, to, to work together to build a, a better world. So that's it. And thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Gutierrez. I mean, there's, uh, if we're talking about pillars, I think Senator Gutierrez is a pillar of this initiative. Um, his work in the Council of Europe and uh, in the United Nations, I was a uh, key speaker in our um, a meeting there uh, several months ago, uh, is crucial to the success of this endeavor. And uh, we hope you will be a partner in global leadership towards the 21st century. Um, in addition to um, the Spanish uh, uh, meeting we were supposed to have in the Spanish um, Parliament, we had scheduled also for the Parliament in London, UK, we had scheduled in um, Italy and, Sp and um, I think in France also. So hopefully when the pandemic will, uh, will be over, we'll be able to reschedule. Uh, we just had a meeting uh, in the Parliament in uh, Israel yesterday to establish a caucus. Uh, if the government lasts, and uh, hopefully this will be a model for the Middle East. Um, and uh, we, we are, you know, we will pray that uh, the pandemic will be over and we'll be able to pursue this uh, towards global leadership for the 21st century. Uh, another key pillar for this um, uh, goal is Dr. Zucconi, who will be our next speaker, president of the Person-Centered Approach Institute chairman of the board of the World Academy of Arts and Sciences, secretary general of the World University Consortium, and um, key advisor to the IPCGE. So the floor goes to um, Dr. Zucconi. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Shoshana, to work, uh, you know, relentlessly for such an important issue. Because uh, as a uh, Antonio Gutierrez and everybody else that know, uh, without peace, there is nothing else. Forget about sustainable goals. Without peace, there is uh, nothing, not even life. And uh, we've been at war with each other, and uh, we've been at war also with animal and plant life. And we can see clearly the results. Many people say also that we influence so badly the environment, then 
some part of the coronavirus pandemic is perhaps also our own fault. Certainly, many others pandemic are man-made, like the trauma, you know, children trauma is another pandemic, having people damaged because they're victim of violence, often in their own homes and certainly in their own communities. And so uh, we are really in need to change. How? I fully support the Shoshana uh, recipe because I think it's the right one and the badly needed one. And I think also it's very scientifically sound, in my opinion, that Shoshana and everybody, and of course our friend and colleague Federico Mayor, that is, you know, was opening our conference even the other day, has been always so uh, supportive, even when he was a director at UNESCO. And let me say, the time allowed is short, but I want to say three things that I think are fundamental. It's right to build peace into changing laws. It's right to build a culture of peace by teaching in school is a right to create the premises for not just talking about peace, but living peace, breathing peace. Why is so much important that legislation is passed? As Jean Max eloquently underlined, and even Shoshana before, because we do have you know, ministry for everything, but uh, look, forgot, uh, how come <laughs> about the ministry of peace? Now, Lourdes, uh, thank God, uh, was uh, very eloquent, I uh, appreciate that. But why is it uh, important uh, to bring uh, peace uh, into lawmaking? Because the, the social construction of reality, laws uh, are substantial element of the creating reality and creating change. And peace is not an expense, it's an investment. Another fundamental thing is teaching a culture of peace. And the other, you know, uh, proposal that uh, legislation pass law in which uh, there is a teaching, a curriculum on the culture of peace in every grade in school is fantastic. It's really revolutionary. I think we need that and we need to put all our heart and effort and because education, that's how we create the new citizen for tomorrow. That's how we create the professional. That's how we socially construe the politicians that are going to pass the law and the leadership of tomorrow. And uh, I would say so that is so important. And in my opinion, uh, you know, my academic background uh, is uh, a clinical psychologist uh, and uh, an educator. I think uh, it's so important. Uh, that's why I joined Shoshana in this uh, with the full conviction and passion that uh, we do the utmost uh, to facilitate the construction of uh, curriculum uh, teaching the culture of peace. We can do also more, and here I'm going to finish. And for example, with Shoshana, we uh, have been designing, and I'm looking for funds, uh, and dissemination, so if anybody is interested, would contact us, uh, to give away for free a training uh, curriculum where we're going to train kids uh, to teach peace uh, to their parents. Why? Because the parent has 
their heart more open when their kids uh, tell them something. I know because I've been collaborating with the World Health Organization. Uh, for example, one successful way is uh, to help kids, uh, to teach their parents to stop smoking. If the doctor says uh, to a parent, uh, look, uh, smoking is dangerous for your health, you know, it's expected. You hear from a year and goes out in another year. But for a kid, they say, Dad, please uh, don't smoke. When you smoke, uh, you poison our lung. And you also poison our, we love you, you love us, please don't go away. Uh, it's a different song, it's a different. Uh, but uh, so I think uh, that uh, uh, we need, uh, and we need uh, to do, for example, one thing I'm experiment. I'm uh, just at the beginning, is uh, for three years old, four years old, uh, teaching the culture of peace with Muppets, uh, with the play therapy, uh, you know, and uh, I just conquered a friend of mine, a famous uh, filmmaker, making movies for kids. We need uh, to get the media to support a culture of peace. We need uh, to support a culture of peace where people la live and work. And uh, last one, uh, I think uh, is a great idea, and uh, more would be heard, uh, about uh, creating, uh, declaring uh, a global day of giving uh, for sustainable peace education and sustainable leadership. Not only for the money, but uh, to do something concrete, a gesture where I'm not passive, but I actively contributing uh, to peace. I want also to finish uh, what I have to say is that uh, to live in peace and to embody a culture of peace uh, is not automatic for everybody. It's a challenge for me in every day. Am I able to make peace uh, at times uh, with the warring uh, conflict inside myself? I'm uh, able to have a, a peace and fruitful relationship uh, with my wife with my colleagues, with my students, with uh, my neighbors, with people that don't know and uh, actually don't share their vision or religion. So I wish everybody that uh, we breathe uh, some peace every day for ourselves. Uh, and uh, first of all, I wish uh, to be able to walk my talk. Good luck. Thank you so much, Dr. Zucconi. So this is, uh, we had the pillar, our diplomatic and parliamentary pillar. Now we have our academic pillar without which we cannot proceed. Um, now we will go forward to a ministerial uh, pillar. Um, we'll ask uh, sec uh, former uh, first and for many years only Secretary of Peace in the world uh, from Guatemala. Uh, we'll speak in Spanish and um, the Ambassador of Peace, Shai Solomon, will translate. Uh, after that, we will go on to the second um, session on uh, the Global Day of Giving, which is very much related uh, to the issue of the culture of peace, because only by giving of yourself and respecting uh, every individual can, can we really have a culture of peace. So now we call on um, the secretary, former secretary, um, of uh, Peace of Guatemala, Dr. Lourdes um, Gitumel, and the Ambassador of Peace, Shai Solomon. You have the floor, please. Thank you. Thank you. Un saludo a los organizadores, a la Academia Mundial de Arte y Ciencia, a las moderadoras, señora Shoshana Beckerman, directora de la Coalición Parlamentaria para la Ética Mundial, a la señora Lili Gray de UNESCO, a los panelistas, doctor Alberto Zucconi y el senador Gutiérrez Limones, mucho gusto. Quiero saludar a la señora Esther Ajayi y demás participantes. Me acompaña el señor Shai Salomon, a quien la CEPAS en su oportunidad nombró embajador de la paz por su trayectoria y actividades en temas de la paz y por su ayuda humanitaria en Guatemala. 
Hello, good afternoon. Uh, good morning from here, from Guatemala. Uh, greeting to the, all the organizers, World Academy Arts of Science, to the moderators, uh, Mr. Shana, Mr. Shana Beckerman, uh, director of IPCGE, uh, Mr. De Great from uh, UNESCO, fellow panelists, uh, Dr. Zucconi, uh, Senator Gutierrez, and uh, Ms. Esther Achai. Um, and today, uh, also, I'm accompanied by Mr. Shai Salomon, um, whom Sepa, the Ministry of Peace, named Ambassador of Peace for his vocation to peace processes and humanitarian aid in Guatemala. Quiero mandar un saludo y los mejores deseos al señor Jean Max, ex parlamentario de Madagascar. Conversamos, conversamos con él en enero de este año en las sedes de Naciones Unidas, siempre impulsando la paz y velando porque los otros estados tengan instituciones que impulsen la paz como una medida para resolver los conflictos internos y externos. We send from here our best wishes to Mr. John Max, uh, former speaker of the Parliament of Madagascar. We had a very fruitful meeting and the possibility to uh, have conversation with him during the UN conference in January this year. Uh, undoubtedly one of the most activists in promoting the culture of peace in his country and in the world. Uh, emphasizing the importance uh, of establishing government offices in each country and uh, engage in promoting peace and solution uh, for both internal and external conflicts. Como ex secretaria de la paz de la presidencia de Guatemala, junto a ustedes contribuyendo a diseminar los ideales de paz y no violencia y fomentar la cultura de paz en el mundo. As a former Minister of Peace of the Presidency of Guatemala, together with all of you, we all contributing to spread the ideals of peace, nonviolence, and promote the culture of peace in the world. Mi compromiso moral, ético y político ha permitido que durante décadas pueda trabajar sobre propuestas de políticas públicas, especialmente en educación y en salud, y que han sido un motivo muy importante y que han apoyado al bienestar en mi país. My moral, ethic, ethical, and political commitment has allowed me for decades to work on public policy proposals, especially in education and health, that have contributed to promote peace in my country. Urge fomentar la cultura de paz en nuestros pueblos, en la región y en el mundo a través de la educación, de la ciencia y la cultura para eliminar la violencia en todas sus formas porque amenaza la paz y la seguridad. It is urgent to foster a culture of peace among our peoples in the region and the entire world through education, science, and culture to eliminate violence in all of its forms since it threatens peace and security. Es imperativo que los Estados miembros de Naciones Unidas legislen en favor de crear ministerios o secretarías al más alto nivel para implementar políticas públicas de cultura de paz y cumplir con los compromisos nacionales e internacionales de derechos humanos para generar una vida digna. It is imperative that the member states of the United Nations legislate in favor of creating peace ministries to implement public policies of culture of peace and fulfill national and international commitments of human rights in order to generate a dignified life. El compromiso de las administraciones gubernamentales es tener instituciones fuertes y sólidas, respetar los derechos humanos para promover sociedades pacíficas e inclusivas como invoca el Objetivo de Desarrollo Sostenible número 16. The commitment of government administration is to have strong and solid institutions respect human rights in order to promote peaceful and inclusive societies and invoked by SDG number 16. El caso de Guatemala. En el contexto de la Guerra Fría ocurrió un hecho histórico político que provocó un conflicto armado interno y duró más de tres décadas, cobró cientos de vidas y personas desaparecidas, llegó a su fin en el año de 1996 
cuando las partes en conflicto con voluntad política firmaron la paz y la reconciliación. The case of Guatemala. In the context of the Cold War, a political and historical event occurred that causes an internal armed conflict that lasted more than three decades. This conflict that claims hundreds of lives and disappeared people came to an end in 1996 when the parties involved uh, with political will signed an agreement of peace and reconciliation. En ese marco de acción se crea la Secretaría de la Paz de la Presidencia, CEPAS, según su estructura orgánica y funcional, está constituida al más alto nivel del organismo ejecutivo y depende directamente de la Presidencia de la República. In this framework, framework of action, the Secretaría de la Paz, the CEPAS, the Ministry of Peace, is created according to its organic and functional structure. It is constituted at the highest level of the executive organism and reports directly to the presidency of the Republic. Es única experiencia en la región. Asesora, acompaña e incide en ministerios y secretarías para implementar la política pública de cultura de paz y apoyar en el cumplimiento de la ley marco de los acuerdos de paz, decreto 52-2005, del Congreso de la República y cada 29 de diciembre de cada año se celebra la firma de la paz en Guatemala. The CEPAS is a unique model in the region. It advises, accompanies and promotes within the ministries and secretaries to implement the public policy of culture of peace as well as providing support in the compliance with the framework law of the peace accord the Creed 152-2005 of the Congress of the Republic of Guatemala. And as Dr. Zucuni mentioned, uh, we have here the day of the peace accord that is being celebrated every uh, year on uh, December 29th. Su función contribuye a consolidar la democracia, la justicia y la paz social. Interactúa con ministerios, con instituciones estatales y sociedad civil. Es importante comentarles que desde la firma de la paz en el país no hay conflicto armado ni muertes por violencia política. CEPAS role contributed to consolidation democracy, justice and social peace, interacting with state institutional as well as civil society organization. It is important to mention here that since the, sign the signing of the peace accords, there was no internal armed conflict, nor death, due to political violence. Su que hacer se armoniza con la proclamación del decenio internacional de acercamiento de las culturas, los objetivos de desarrollo sostenible, con énfasis en el número 16, paz, justicia e instituciones sólidas, la declaración y el programa de acción de las Naciones Unidas sobre una cultura de paz. The past work uh, is harmonized with the proclamation of the international decade for the rapprochement of cultures, 2013-2022, as well as with the SDG, with emphasis on number 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. The United Nations Declaration and the Program of Action regarding the culture of peace. Durante mi gestión en la CEPA, se trabajó en la Escuela de Cultura de Paz con diplomados, programas semipresenciales y a distancia, formación de agentes multiplicadores para fomentar la paz, el curso virtual Mi Proyecto de Paz. Asimismo, se nombró embajadores de la paz a personas honorables, siendo esta un modelo relevante y exitoso. During my term at CEPAS, the School of Culture of Peace was expanded. Diplomates, uh, presential and distant programs were carried out, as well as the formation of multiplying agents to promote peace, along with the uh, development of virtual course as my peace project. Likewise, the appointment of ambassadors of peace to honorable persons continued uh, being a relevant and successful model. Hago un llamado a encarar los desafíos de estos tiempos, potenciando liderazgos, impulsando acciones para un mundo mejor con justicia social, 
fomentar las alianzas con universidades, organizaciones y otros actores para avanzar hacia la paz. My call is to face the challenges of these times, empowering leaders, promoting action for a better world with social justice, foster alliance with university organizations and other social actors to advance towards peace. Además, aprovechar las lecciones que deja esta pandemia, recreando las formas de vida que tengan como principio fundamental la práctica de valores como la tolerancia, cultura del diálogo, respeto a las culturas y religiones, que son las mejores garantías para preservar la paz en el mundo entero. We have to take this opportunity and take advantage of this lesson from the pandemic, recreating ways of life that have as a fundamental principle the practice of values such as tolerance, culture of dialogue, respect for cultures in general and religious and religions, uh, which are the best guarantee to preserve peace in the entire world. Finalmente, reitero mi compromiso de seguir trabajando para una mejor Guatemala, apoyando a otros estados que así lo requieran, y trabajar por un mundo en paz y con justicia social. Muchas gracias. Finally, I reaffirm my commitment to continue working for a better Guatemala and for all those countries that would like to collaborate and uh, in general to promote peace in the world with uh, everything uh, that has to be with culture of peace and social justice. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lord uh, and uh, Shai. Um, we wish we had more time. <laughs> we only have one hour, and uh, we are sure that um, Dr. Lourdes, uh, with, with Shai's help, will be able to mentor future um, secretaries of um, peace or ministers of peace, and we're working to start this, hopefully, uh, in the near future. Um, and we're sure that uh, the minister will be sort of um, uh, an overall global leader in this, uh, in this endeavor. Um, we will go on to our second session uh, regarding the uh, Global Day of Giving with uh, Reverend Esther Jai. We'd just like to congratulate um, Reverend, who is now going to be called Reverend Dr. Uh, Esther Ajayi, after receiving a doctorate from um, University of California in Chaplaincy and Doctor of Philosophy. Um, I, I will briefly uh, explain what the uh, Global Day of Giving is within the framework of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, as you know, the uh, development goals are all linked uh, one to another. Um, uh, they are integrated. That is, they recognize that the action in one area will affect outcomes in others and that development must balance social, economic and environmental sustainability. The current COVID-19 pandemic has further proven that governments alone cannot meet all the needs of citizens, when, whether in times of tragedy, crisis, or even normal circumstances. Without the help of volunteers in all arenas of social life, no country afflicted by the pandemic would have been capable of providing the basic needs of food, comfort, and social services needed. Um, the example of the uh, Esther Ajayi Foundation, uh, who, which changes lives, uh, people's lives through the power of giving, uh, by uh, taking people out of poverty, providing shelter to homeless, giving hope to the underprivileged, uh, stretching out a hand to those in need. Um, it serves as a um, sort of model for the Global Day of Giving, which will be presented uh, for a vote in the um, General Assembly. Um, uh, we have to change the order of speakers, uh, I think, because of the lack of time. We will ask um, Reverend uh, Ajayi and um, the uh, additional uh, speaker, Dr. Uh, Momudu, um, to who is the um, uh, editor of the, uh, excuse me, um, editor and publisher of International uh, Ovations Magazine. Uh, present this and uh, I think in our conclusion um, the uh, liaison officer uh, of New York um, uh, Department, uh, New York section of uh, UNESCO will wrap up uh, and on how all of this ties together with the UN mandate on the culture of peace and global education citizenship. So um, I yield the floor to uh, Reverend uh, Ajayi and um, Dr. Mahmoudou please.
Dr. Mamudu and Reverend Esther Ajayi. Unmute uh, your hello. mic. Hello, oh. hello, how are you? How are you, Shushana? How have you been? Zuconi, I also I always say my friend from Spain. How are you? I hope you've been keeping safe. Good evening, distinguished panels. It gives me great pleasure to be speaking to you from Lagos, Nigeria, in Africa. Lagos is the heart of Africa, a mega city with population of about 20 million people. Um, we've been trying as much as possible to keep safe here, and I hope you all have been keeping safe. Lagos has its own peculiar beauty and challenges, which the government alone cannot resolve. There is no better time to speak on the global day of giving as a key element in search for strategies for global leadership in the 21st century than now. There are a lot of things that have been going on all over the world. We all have been witnessing this. But fortunately, the Esther Jai Foundation, that I am the founder and the president, we have started on the um, a global, a global Day of Giving since, since about um, September last year. We've been, we've been propagating that we should have this on board. Um, the, I'm a citizen of St. Kitts and Nevis as well. And um, the Foreign Affairs um, Minister, uh, Mark Bourne himself, uh, we've had meetings, we've discussed before the pandemic and hopefully after all this we'll be able to take this clearly into the un because there is no such time better than now to have global day of giving without the help of charitable organizations donor agencies and volunteers from across the globe the day-to-day -day needs of citizens in drug, uh, for the drug testing, feeding, healthcare delivery, shelter, basic sanitary supplies, and even medical equipment needed will not have been available on the scale required. And this is where Global Giving Day will be so, so very crucial. We've been giving it's not always about all the equipment alone. Giving ourselves, giving this time, what we are doing right now is part of giving. Giving our time, giving your time to say hello to a neighbor, giving your, your time to, to welcome people is still part of giving. And if we have the Global Giving Day, I'm sure it's going to go a long way in touching the hearts of people. I'm a pastor. I'll always go back to the thing of the Bible. The book of Luke chapter 6, verse 38 says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, running over. That is what God is going to return back into your bosom. As you are giving, heaven is opening unto you as well. And that is where global day of giving is very, very important. Recently, the Esther Ajayi Foundation, we joined forces with the white government churches, where I am a, I'm a key member, to have the Moses Orimolade University to achieve recognition, justice, development for people of Africa, descent in Africa, descent in Africa and all around, all around the world to accelerate global strategy and action to eradicate poverty is still part of giving to achieve peace, social justice for people of all faiths and ethnic groups around the world. It's still part of the giving. And Esther Jai Foundation, we are putting it upon ourselves that until the world recognizes how important we are to ourselves concerning giving, we are not going to stop. The activities of the Esther Jai Foundation within the framework of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals are the model for implementation of goals of the International Decade 
for people of African descendant and United Nations decade for the eradication of poverty. My own life experience has moved me to train people out of poverty, create a culture of peace among all faiths by joining forces with individuals, institutions, communities, and NGOs. At some point at the United Kingdom, where I was then, I was homeless. My husband was on an hospital bed at the North Middlesex Hospital. He was having a type of diabetics where his blood was not going into his vein. It has thickened up. And um, at some point, with the help of people giving on to me, I was able to scale through. And that was what brought about the Esther Jai Foundation. There is a woman out there that the husband, who is the breadwinner, is sick somewhere. There is a child out there who is the father, is the breadwinner, is sick somewhere. And I decided by myself that I'm going to give back to nature. And the Esther Jai Foundation, we have been on this. For example, we provided healthcare delivery through, through the partnership with the Hand Foundation on a cancer screening program in Lagos State. In the United Kingdom, the Esther Jai Foundation, we partner with Focus on Disability Foundation UK to improve the quality of education for children with disabilities and improvise in professional Africa schools by donating educational material, their uniforms, and dis, uh, disability aids. The Esther Jai Foundation, we provided financial support for the Heart Foundation established by Baroness Cause in the uh, United Kingdom to build a healthcare clinic in Southern, this, this, uh, Southern Sudan. We also, supported the wager compassions in Ghana and the, and the Naomi Royal Seed Foundation also in Ghana. Giving has come to a level where it's not only just materialistic things or financial things, even your hello, even your smile is still part of giving. It will encourage the world a lot. And uh, finally, in my role as a Christian leader who hold the title of matron and financial support, supporter of over 55 churches in Nigeria and other countries around the world, I am passionate about creating a culture of peace among all faiths, a faith and a culture of giving so that the, the global giving day will be something that I will come to say through my charitable initiatives, I have met and worked with people of all faiths, those who are in need and those who provide help and assistance. The Esther Jai Foundation, we will see human beings before seeing your culture, before seeing your country, before seeing your color. We just want to see human beings that is in need, that we want to extend the hand of giving uh, to. And I always say this, what you don't know, you can't teach. What you don't have, you can't give. But all of us have got one thing or the other that we can give out to the world. And that is where the World Global Giving Day is very, very crucial. Global World Number, the initiatives we have undertaken at the SIJI Foundation correspond with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, especially in goal number one, concerning poverty, alienating poverty, goal number two, zero hunger. Providing food during this pandemic, we've been sharing food, giving a lot of people some egg, protein, some carbohydrate, we'll be sharing. Then goal number three, good health and well-being for people. That's where we supported the Hens Foundation. Goal number four, quality education. The Moses Orimolade University is causing the Esther Jai Foundation almost, almost 28 million pounds, US dollars. And then we, we've been on this then. Goal number five, gender 
equality. We've been on this, we've been, we've been campaigning on it. Then go number six, clean water and sanitation. Go number eight, decent work and economic growth. Then go number 10, reduce inequalities. Go number 16, which is very, very important to other peace, justice, and strong institutions. Go number 17, partnership for all the goals. I am here to form additional networking potential with the World Academy of Arts and Science, the UN and UNESCO, and the Interparliamentary Coalition for Global Ethnics, and as well as any and all relevant institutions and groups to achieve this goal. The greatest gift of giving is giving itself. And it's not about the people, it's about you. I believe as an act upon the belief that the act of selfless giving connects us to our greater humanity. The Global Day of Giving is intended to inspire all of humanity to give of themselves in any way possible, spiritually, physically, financially, voluntarily, to achieve a more peaceful and sustainable world as a fundamental strategy to global leadership in the 21st century. We believe that we must go forth from the headquarters of the globe, the United Nations, to achieve the goals in unity and in partnership. I thank you for listening unto me. Thank you so very much. Thank you indeed. Thank you, Reverend, uh, uh, Ajay for, Reverend Dr. Ajay for this really passionate uh, presentation. Susanna, can, I, can I quickly say this? Just a I moment, Esther. We are out of time. Uh, do you want a 30 minutes extra time? Uh, because two people have not uh, had a chance uh, to speak. Uh, you want me to ask uh, the administration that is uh, hearing us uh, for 30 more additional minutes? Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> we, 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 we are we are out of, um, Okay, Bunny, please. To share about my doctor. 30 more minutes. Uh, we have okay. people that have not been able to speak yet. Thank you. I think um, yeah. Lily, Lily from UNESCO just motioned that she has to go. So can we leave, uh, can we give the floor now to Lily? Um, oh. Because she's very, very patient. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> everything really that we're doing connects to UNESCO. So then we'll have a yeah. chance after Lily's um, presentation to speak further. Okay, we, we hopefully we'll be having another few, uh, another 20 minutes at least. So um, Lily, um, liaison officer of UNESCO at uh, UN headquarters in New York. Uh, we will give you the uh, floor, and then we'll get back to uh, Reverend Njai and Dr. Mamudu, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, distinguished speakers, uh, partners, friends, uh, distinguished guests. Uh, thank you for engaging me in this important discussion. I have to say it's, a, uh, it's been a series of uh, discussions around the promotion of culture of peace by IPCG and uh, uh, it's a uh, really important partners in in your face. Uh, certainly, um, um, you mentioned I work at UNESCO, and uh, as most of you know, the culture of peace is ingrained in the DNA of the organization. That was created at the uh, aftermath of the Second World War uh, on the premises uh, of uh, 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 the aspirations to build peace in the minds of uh, men and women. And unfortunately, uh, as today, the United Nations celebrates its 75th anniversary. Um, and we are experiencing this uh, unprecedented crisis, um, the, the COVID-19 pandemic. We still continue to see um, uh, unfortunate uh, uh, phenomenon uh, that the UN was uh, uh, established to, uh, to counter, such as uh, uh, increasing inequalities and phobia, racial discrimination, but also violence, extremism that are sparked by hatred and ignorance. So that's why I think initiatives as this one are really very important. And um, if you allow me for the brief time that uh, I have, I just wanted to mention 
some key kind of messages that are coming uh, strongly um, uh, in evaluating the situation of the uh, global disruption of education um, that is due to COVID. Um, you uh, have noticed, but also it's uh, established by UNESCO data that uh, uh, 1.5 billion students all, all over the world um, had their education services disrupted. And indeed, it is uh, this COVID-19 crisis gives us a momentum to reevaluate um, the lessons learned, but also to uh, redesign the new education systems to be more resilient and to include a stronger focus on culture of peace. And here many of you have uh, uh, mentioned the importance of uh, using education, science, um, um, uh, culture, new technologies in order to, to build the fences of peace in uh, people's minds. And um, let me start with this uh, education disruption by saying that the, the biggest message that has come up forward and UNESCO is promoting is uh, the message of the required solidarity. Our uh, global humanity, the world requires solidarity. And indeed, this came very strongly from all the messages of the speakers. This is also one of the ideas of the International Commission for Futures of Education in their uh, recently published report that they push for a, a stronger global solidarity. Um, 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 uh, Parliamentarian Gutierrez also mentioned it uh, in the form of multilateralism. So definitely this is a very strong need for that. And uh, um, uh, solidarity uh, uh, that could also be seen in supporting educational infrastructures in developing countries. And for example, what we've seen with COVID is the that magnitude of this challenge is clearly um, uh, very, um, very big uh, as far as the digital divide and as far as the digital divide, notably in Africa. UNESCO has uh, put forward data that state that only 11% of learners in sub-Saharan Africa have a household computers and only 18% have household internet as compared to the 50% of learners globally who have computers in the home and 57% who have access to internet. So we already see that uh, the disruptions brought on by the pandemics are also exacerbating inequalities both within and across countries. So, um, so certainly um, uh, uh, many of you have also mentioned the, the push to have the um, um, strengthen the public commitment to education as a common good education that is uh, based on the principles of culture of peace, of inclusion and solidarity, and education that supports individual and collective um, uh, understanding. Um, certainly, uh, the pandemic has magnified um, many of the um, um, many of the long-standing challenges facing for humanities. And what the lessons learned should be is indeed how to build resilience, resilient societies through resilient education systems. Um, very briefly, let me just mention that this global health crisis, uh, we at UNESCO think it, can, uh, it cannot be faced and it cannot be defeated by health measures alone. Indeed, it also needs uh, um, Humanity needs to build civic trust, to deepen human empathy, to uh, um, restore trust in science, very important with all the misinformation that is going on now, but also uh, in restoring appreciation of our global humanity through a culture of peace. And that's where uh, maybe parliamentarians should need to uh, listen and engage with education, educators, how we can um, support each other um, and, uh, and promote this culture of peace. Um, definitely the right to education um, that is established through parliamentarians, the right to education should be perceived also much broader in a broader sense. We see now that education is being provided through online platforms and it should also encompass uh, the right to uh, connectivity, to digital devices and of course here it comes the point about the global solidarity. Um, 
Certainly, um, a lesson that is very valuable also in promoting the cultural peace through the global citizenship education is that um, governments would need to uh, provide the frontline educators with certain autonomy and flexibility uh, to engage and uh, um, support the pedagogical efforts to install um, the content and engage with learners and with students. So um, just uh, briefly to, uh, I know I have to probably uh, um, um, kind of finish, but I, I want once again to mention that national governments, parliamentarians, parliamentarians and all education and development partners um, should recognize that need of uh, um, solidarity uh, um, in advancing the global sustainable development goals, but also in advancing um, uh, respect for human rights um, respect for um, each other and mutual understanding uh, and I thank you once again for um, for this opportunity to engage in the discussion and I would like to congratulate you all uh, for that endeavor and last but not least I do hope to see you sometime soon in person um, uh, hopefully there will be an opportunity thank you very much Roshana and uh, thank you for your attention Thank you, uh, Lily. Uh, I mean, without uh, UNESCO, I think, um, again, uh, you're the pillar at the UN with uh, this mandate. Um, well, uh, the UNESCO and you as their representative are the pillar at the UN. Uh, again, the mandate uh, is in your hands. Um, I think, I mean, if you have another few minutes, then there might be some questions and answers on the difference between uh, teaching about the culture of peace and global citizenship education. Uh, just to mention something before we go back to our previous speakers, um, we know that uh, uh, the, uh, His Excellency Federico Mayor um, was uh, influential in, in having a law passed in Spain on um, education for the culture of peace. It didn't work there because uh, in uh, several areas, uh, because of the political problems in Spain, they consider it as citizenship education rather than culture of peace. So if we can spend a few minutes later on this, um, uh, hopefully that will be, uh, uh, I think, uh, effective. Um, and uh, I think, uh, as we once mentioned in our uh, discussion, but it's a little bit preliminary, uh, the issue of day, Global Day of Giving does fall in some uh, in the framework of global citizenship education. There is no um, really, uh, uh, this is something that every child uh, really needs to learn from early age on. So um, just uh, to give it, we, since we, got another, we have another 15, 20 minutes and maybe field some questions. Before uh, we go on to that, we'll have our final speaker is Dr. Um, Deli Mamudu, the publisher of Ovations International Magazine, uh, I think is also situated in Nigeria and we give you the floor, please. Thank you very much and uh, good evening fellow panelists. Um, I wish to show and demonstrate that my life's trajectory is a veritable example of what the culture of giving can produce and can promote. Uh, so let me thank you for this opportunity on a special location such as this. I was born in Nigeria in 1960 to an average family. My father was a lower cadre civil servant working and maintaining roads. My mother was a petty trader, cooking and selling food to prisoners. I lost my father while I was barely 13 and was left for my poor and uneducated mother. Life became harsh and brutish. We lost our home because we couldn't afford to pay rent. My education at that stage would have been threatened if not for the introduction of free education and scholarships by the government. But feeding and drinkable water posed grave dangers. Thank God there was no COVID-19 at that time. It would have been dangerous for three of us, my mom, my sister, and I to manage one small and dingy room. We had to fetch water every morning from a nearby river with its attendant risk and inf of infections. Thank God we survived. Though my mom lacked any formal education, she knew the value of education. And she worked very hard at sending us to schools. 
I had to engage in menial jobs to keep body and soul together, as well as to augment my mom's meager income. Education would eventually liberate me from terminal poverty. I will save you the details of my harrowing experiences of life, but I am proud to tell you today that I published the leading African celebrity magazine, popularly known as Ovation International. It would have been impossible to achieve this without the constant support of kind-hearted and good-spirited people like the prayerful woman of God and global philanthropist, Reverend Mother Abimbola Esther Ajayi, who got me invited here. I am eternally grateful and heavily indebted to someone like her for that uncommon generosity. Reverend Esther Ajayi, now Dr. Esther Ajayi, has touched millions of lives without discriminating against anyone on account of gender, race, or sex. I've learned a lot from my example, and I've been making my own modest contributions by touching lives in the area of education and promoting entrepreneurship amongst our youths who form a substantial chunk of our population. I was a Nigerian presidential candidate in the year 2011, but I lost the election. My dream was to mobilize the huge resources available to our country from the oil trades for the general good of our people. Leadership has been a major challenge globally. We need more benevolent leadership that can legislate against wants, poverty, diseases, and famine. I'm happy to join you and act as a catalyst for eliminating human backwardness, and I am certainly honored to join hands with all present here to realize this lofty dream. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mamudu. That was very inspiring. And uh, maybe uh, till your next candidacy for presidentship, uh, maybe you'll consider to be Minister of Peace. <laughs> um, Definitely. Hopefully, maybe, uh, Thank you. <laughs> the Esther uh, Dying Foundation will be able to, to push in that direction. Uh, and we look forward to continue working together. Um, thank you. I thank just, you for your uh, kind compliments. Thank you. Well, we hope to follow up. I don't know if there will be, um, among the panelists, I'm sure that we will find a way to uh, continue and uh, coordinate our partnership. Um, I don't know if there are any questions uh, from the participants. Not uh, yet, not yet, yeah. okay. The um, Dr. Lourdes uh, and Shai uh, had to leave because they had the room only uh, un until seven o'clock. Um, so I guess we can we can share some um, suggestions. And I know Reverend Esther had uh, something to uh, to continue speaking. Reverend Esther, you were about to say something. Hello. Hello. Hello, Susanna. Can you hear me? Um, you were about, yes, you want you wanted to speak to continue speaking about something. Yes, about my doctorate degree is from CIC International University for Seminary, and the and the other one from a um, chaplaincy church a call mark body call mark that is in Philadelphia. I was telling you that I met the guy in California. Well, it's all right. How have you been? It's okay. And um, to tell you that um, the mask, um, we have to continue to pray for him. You know, he's highly, highly diabetic, but at some point, I'm going to talk to you. After this, you have to call me. Okay, I, I'm happy. And um, thank Sokoni uh, as well. And I can hear you. Well, I'm having, we're having trouble with the audio. Um, so, uh, yeah. hello? 
Hello. Hello, I can hear you, Susanna. Okay, so uh, maybe we should go uh, just around to the panel again if there are any questions or any uh, suggestions as to how to move forward even with the uh, constraints of the pandemic. Um, we are uh, at IPCGE, we are thinking of uh, maybe together with the World Academy to do some Zoom uh, conferences at the various um, parliaments. Uh, which were scheduled for March and April. Uh, we will discuss with uh, Senator Gutierrez and with our um, various uh, parliamentarians in, uh, in the UK, uh, in Italy, um, hopefully in the African Union. Uh, I don't know how they're functioning uh, today, but maybe we can continue and to have a separate Zoom or even um, joint, it would be very interesting to have joint uh, Zoom sessions uh, with these parliamentarians. Um, Dr. Zaccone, do you think that's a possibility? Uh, certainly it is. Uh, and actually, even before the COVID, the uh, teleconference uh, was widely used. Uh, actually, uh, I think uh, there are some real opportunity, uh, not only as you rightly pointed out uh, with the uh, interparliamentary Zoom, but uh, could uh, be organized also with the media uh, representative, uh, with union representative, with the youth organization representative. I think, uh, you know, civil society is really uh, a grassroots uh, uh, culture of peace uh, uh, promotion uh, uh, is uh, relevant uh, and uh, uh, Interparliamentary action uh, is very relevant, of course, uh, because law creates uh, reality, a lot for funds, uh, decide what is taught in school, but uh, you can expand uh, also to involve some uh, with the journalist, uh, for example, or people that write a kid's book, uh, you know, people that uh, create television for kids, you know, if the culture of peace uh, becomes pervasive, uh, I think uh, uh, it would be easier to promote change. Well, for, uh, I know that UNESCO has uh, various online uh, programs, educational programs, um, but again, unless we have the national parliaments involved, I don't think it really reaches uh, on a global level. Um, I, I know there's also some kind of, um, that also goes for uh, instituting the, uh, the concept of uh, giving uh, of yourself. I think that has to be taught also from, uh, from uh, I know, infancy, basically, when you have children who, who have to learn how to share. Um, that's part of the culture of peace, uh, I, I would assume. Uh, but uh, maybe Lily can uh, just zoom in on what we discussed, the, um, the basic difference between global citizenship education and the framework of culture of peace. I, I don't think global citizenship education, the way it is um, uh, being promoted now, includes all the elements of the culture of peace uh, that Frederico Mayor, uh, His Excellency, envisaged. Uh, am I correct or going to Lily? <laughs> Um, Susan, it's an important question you're raising, but uh, of course these are concepts that have been coined at uh, different uh, contexts and time frames, yet they have many similarities. So uh, I, I let me just start from what is common and similar and uh, probably uh, can lead the uh, participants if they're also inclined to look further for the, the uh, differences. But, as much as the uh, Education for Culture of Peace tries to uh, install cognitive knowledge in learners, uh, values um, and uh, behavioral changes, that is also the aspiration and the goal and the target of the global citizenship. So I think uh, in terms of uh, um, um, what the aim is to, uh, to install the values and principles of culture of peace, of sustainable development, of the ways to live together in peace. This is also as a core um, uh, substitute of the understanding of uh, education for global citizenship. 
uh, as being a more um, a later concept, it's still evolving, it's still um, uh, um, um, looking into, um, it's still evolving. And for example, let me give you the recent example is that UNESCO is now engaging to um, um, certifying why education is very impo important to counter hate speech uh, through the lenses of global citizenship education. Uh, that doesn't mean we exclude the education, education for culture of peace, but uh, I would say it means that uh, the, the, this uh, new understanding uh, of the broadened concept of education for global citizenship uh, also enraptures, um, um, also uh, takes into account the, the, the education for culture of peace. And as you also all know, it both this uh, type of transformative education uh, met methodology, uh, uh, content curricula, they are both referred to in the so-called uh, target 4.7. It's not by chance that they are coupled together. Indeed, lots of similarities, uh, lots of commonalities, uh, yet uh, sometimes there are different proponents and advocates, but uh, it is my uh, understanding that uh, you can easily put within the concept of global citizenship all the necessary elements that we see in the education for culture of peace. It's just different times and different advocates and of course there is a challenge with the education for global citizenship um, and that is the challenge that citizenship is perceived only as a legal, legal terminology and uh, you know, it, it, citizenship entails the rights to vote, the right to uh, uh, participate in political life, uh, benefit economically from government structures. So that uh, if, if you, if you uh, see some of the opponents of the global citizenship concept are putting these concerns forward. Um, the loss of uh, local national identities in this broader global citizenship, but also the challenges that we might equate the concept with the um, legal terminology. But uh, these are just some of the discussions around the global citizenship uh, education. I'm not sure it's the full answer to that, and I'll be happy to share some, um, some resources for everyone. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Just just one note. I think um, in light of what you've said, in light of what we know, I think um, they both complement each other. The, U the UNESCO, uh, I think this was an um, initiative of the Secretary, former Secretary General um, uh, of uh, the UN. Uh, but I think, again, uh, they, the uh, education for the culture of peace um, sort of would supplement uh, what you know, the, the uh, aspects that you uh, mentioned about, because again, just like, uh, just as this, the example of Spain, uh, I know Senator Gutierrez uh, probably is very well informed on that. Um, there is a, a large section of the Spanish um, uh, area that did not accept uh, the um, uh, Spanish uh, law because it dealt more with citizenship. So uh, we're back to Senator Gutierrez, and um, we know that there's a lot of work to be done. He, uh, Senator Gutierrez has many hats, um, and uh, maybe we can discuss to have an interparliamentary uh, conference with some of the uh, additional parliaments, uh, at least not to wait till the flying situation is, uh, is uh, solved, uh, but maybe we can actually schedule um, and introduce uh, caucuses for the culture of peace education. This would solve the issues with citizenship education. And maybe we can go forward in the next uh, at least month or uh, next uh, two months. And hopefully UNESCO will zoom in and, <laughs> again um, and, and um, be a collaborator. Um, maybe uh, yes. Senator Gutierrez? Yes, I think it's a very good idea. You know, we have, you know, the pandemic, uh, uh, give us, you know, to many is the different things, you know. So probably we, it's a good opportunity, you know, to have many conferences, you know, telematic conference, and this is an opportunity. That doesn't mean that we, I think we have to, you know, to go to the, to the different countries to, you know, because it's very good, you know, to go there, you know, have the opportunity to talk to different people. And bye-bye. And I see pandemic, you know, uh, make us all, 
to think a lot about what is going on. But I think, you know, and what's the world we want, and, you know, we have all the opportunity to think. I think government, not government organization, uh, uh, people in different countries. So probably, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a good moment, you know, to point, you know, I mean, UNESCO, uh, uh, our, our organization, uh, United Nations, uh, European, you know, Council of Europe, a national parliament to work in the same direction in the culture of peace, you know? So now I think it's a very good opportunity. Probably we had to wait until September, October to have that conference in Spain. But it could be a very good, uh, you know, experience, you know, to, to have this conference with, uh, with the national parliamentarians of different groups, different com committees, you know, overall, the person that are working in the new education lobby in Spain. So it'd be very good, you know, I think it's a very good idea, Georgiana. Well, thank you so much. So maybe uh, we can schedule uh, even a, a, another Zoom um, session for uh, in a month with some parliamentarians from different uh, European countries, uh, maybe to include even African countries since uh, we're looking uh, to work with Africa. Um, we had, uh, as you know, we had the um, uh, deputy chairman of the African Parliament uh, at your invitation at the Council of Europe. So we'll, we'll look to schedule um, this idea, uh, maybe for the next month, if that's possible, at least with four or five parliaments and uh, the African Union. Um, and also, if possible, um, maybe to introduce eventually during the year, uh, parallel to the General Assembly, also Global Day of Giving in the Council of uh, Europe. <laughs> Uh, I think that would be uh, the Europeans as well. We learned in Italy and in Spain, if not for voluntary assistance of ordinary citizenship, uh, you could not overcome the, all the needs of the pandemic. So this is in a parallel way, very, very important. And uh, we rely on the pillar of uh, diplomacy, Senator Gutierrez, to, to help promote this. So thank you very, very much. Uh, we have three minutes more. Uh, Is Connie still with us? Um, hello, Dr. Zucconi. Hello. And uh, actually, uh, I don't have any more to add, uh, except uh, you know that uh, I really hope uh, that today, tomorrow, next day, I can walk in peace uh, with uh, in my emotional ground uh, and uh, relate to others uh, in peace. And in that, I probably would uh, be more happy as a person and uh, be part uh, of the solution and not of the problem. So if uh, we want uh, to spread and foster peace, uh, let's be generous with ourselves, because we cannot give our others what we don't have. Well, that I think ties in both uh, initiatives and um, we hope that uh, the World Academy of Arts and Sciences together with the UN Geneva will help promote these two essential uh, initiatives for global uh, leadership towards the 21st century. Um, I think we included uh, really some of the pillars in diplomacy, in uh, religion, um, in education. Uh, we, as you say, we have to include the media, which is uh, very essential in promoting uh, the, the whole uh, concept among the citizenship. And we look forward and pray for success and health and safety uh, for everybody. Uh, thank you very much again to the World Academy of Arts and Sciences, UN Geneva, to all our panelists, our distinguished VIP pillars uh, for this uh, common and uh, mutual goal. And we look forward to follow up. Um, uh, we'll, we'll be in touch by email, by telephone, and hopefully schedule uh, an interparliamentary meeting for uh, next month if possible. Thank you very much. Thank Bye you. everybody. <laughs> Ciao. Thank Ciao. you. Bye-bye <laughs> everybody.